guys, it's Reagan, and for today's video, I'm in the back of my car again, which means that we are doing an updated first aid kit. This is a DIY budget-friendly first aid kit, and I wanted to share the updated version with you guys. Um, the original video was posted like back in 2019, so very long, long time ago. And so I wanted to do an updated version. First aid kits or any kind of emergency kit should constantly be evolving, should constantly be growing, becoming more efficient. Um, so I felt like this was stuff that I really did need to share with you guys. I will link that original video down below so that you guys can check it out if you haven't seen it already. That way you can kind of get a good gauge on like the before and after. Um, the changes that I have made, the progress that it's made, um, all that good stuff. So I got some really good critique and some really not good critique on the last video. Um, so I would just like to point out that this is a first aid kit not an ambulance, not a pharmacy. Um, it is meant to be realistic, lightweight, budget friendly, and so that is what I have put together for you today. With that being said, uh, this is my first aid kit. The bag itself I purchased from Amazon. The bag was empty. It's very difficult to find empty first aid kits like you know do it yourself put it together from scratch type of kits and that is what I would advise to anyone so that way you can prioritize what you need for yourself and your family um, instead of overspending on a first aid kit that is basically just like a glorified box of band-aids I would prefer doing it myself so that I can put it together based on my needs and my priorities. So this bag was actually an EMT bag from Amazon. Um, I bought this, it was about $15, so not too, not too outrageous at all. Everything in this bag is either from Dollar Tree or from Amazon. Um, I 100% trust Dollar Tree for like bandages, medications, things like that. Um, I've talked about that before. And then everything else is from Amazon, so I'll try and mention those things like when I get there. All right, now on to the actual first aid kit. So there are two side pockets um, and a main compartment to this bag. I love this bag. It fits perfectly in the hatch door of my car. That's where I store it. Um, so this is a really, really good quality, durable bag. So I'm just going to start with the first side pocket and then I'll do the other side pocket and then the main compartment. In this side pocket, I've got a couple different things I'll try and show you. So I'm just going to pull things out in like no particular order. The first thing in here is a digital thermometer. Yes, it is still in the pack because um, it's easier to pull out. And then I also have a couple medications. So the first medication that I have is some Claritin, just like a daily allergy med. I also have some Benadryl. This is super, super important in case anybody were to have an allergic reaction to anything of any sort. The next thing I have is some ibuprofen, um, basically Advil. Um, this is great for pain relief, obviously. The next medication that I have is some Pepto-Bismol, which can be used for um, heartburn, nausea, and diarrhea, so kind of like a catch-all med in one, as well as some aspirin. So aspirin would be great for a headache or like general pain relief, but if somebody starts having chest pain, um, maybe like a more advanced medical emergency like that, this is what I'm going to grab. I'm gonna have them pop back some of these and be on our way. The next thing in this compartment is some antibacterial wet wipes. These are meant to be used on your hands and your face, but you could also use them to sanitize um, products if you wanted to. Uh, on my last video, someone mentioned they used those to like wipe down a toilet seat, gas station bathroom, so that's not a bad idea. Then I also have some pain relief balm. So this is ultra strength. 
Um, I have a lot of back pain and shoulder pain and stuff like that. So um, this is just good, like topical wise, kind of like the um, what's like icy hot, like Dollar Tree's version of icy hot. So you can't go wrong with that. So that is everything in this front pocket on the side. Now I'm going to move to the other side. All right. So in this other side pocket. Um, I've got a lot of creams and ointments. So the first thing that I have is some itch relief gel. This is kind of basically like gel Benadryl. I also have some anti-itch cream or Benadryl cream. I have some hydrocortisone cream as well as some calamine lotion and some petroleum jelly. Now you're probably thinking, Reagan, why do you have so many anti-itch products. Let me just explain to you real quick. Um, I have eczema, which is like a lifelong condition. Um, there's psoriasis, eczema, like skin conditions that people have that they might need to treat. And obviously you're going to treat those in a different way than you would treat an allergic reaction to something. Um, so for my eczema or like psoriasis, you might use this hydrocortisone cream. It tends to mimic a steroid, and so it gives you more of an anti-inflammatory uh, formula. Now for the Benadryl cream and the Benadryl gel, um, honestly, I think it depends on the type of like rash that you're trying to treat. If the skin is broken, I would probably use this ointment. If not, I would use the gel. Um, just because the gel is probably going to sting a little bit um, on an open wound versus this cream ointment will not. And then the calamine lotion, this is gonna work better for uh, like poison ivy, poison oak, things that like weep, you know? Uh, certain bug bites, things like that. I had chicken pox when I was younger and this is what we put on it. Um, so you're gonna treat different kinds of things with this, but this is more meant to help dry things out. So I'm not gonna put this on like a general allergic reaction. If someone is like broken out in hives, I'm not gonna put this on because it's gonna do more drying than it is benefit. So. Now that is pretty much everything that is in this side pocket. So now I'm gonna move on to this big main compartment here. The stuff that's in here is organized, so I'm gonna try to take it out in a way that I can easily put it back in. Um, so we'll just kind of start pulling things out. All right, so here is what this main compartment kind of looks like with the stuff in it. So on the side here, I have lots of different bandages. Um, I have these type of band-aids that are meant to go on the tip of your finger, as well as these types of band-aids that can go over a knuckle. I have a ace wrap. You might need more than one, depending on what you're trying to wrap or splint. You know, one might not do the trick, so adding in another one, no harm there. I have this maze, like it's a nasal spray all right but this is saline literally just saline so i can use this for other things than trying to rinse out my nose obviously you could use it on a wound to wash out a wound etc i have two little rolls of uh coban small coban and i would just like to point out i shared this in the last video but this is the walmart brand one and then this is the dollar tree one um like, I, this one just looks so much better to me. I don't know what it is. Both of these have been used too, so they're actually a bigger roll, but um, I don't know. The Dollar Tree one just looks a little bit like better quality to me. Anyways, I have some triple antibiotic ointment. Um, this could be used ranging from a paper cut to a more like severe um, wound that you need to treat. Um, my husband actually had a fingernail ripped off at work. And so we used this to prevent uh, infection. I also have some medical tape um, as well as this like first aid waterproof splinting tape. This is the white tape. This is just clear tape, kind of beneficial for like 
holding on a bandage, that kind of thing, as well as a rolled gauze. So this could be used for a wound or it could actually be used to go underneath that ace wrap that I showed you to prevent you know, skin breakdown, that kind of thing. Um, this is another one of those things like the ace that it definitely wouldn't hurt you to have multiples of in your first aid kit. All right, next I've got just some regular normal band-aids, nothing crazy. Then I also have some of these bigger band-aids. Um, not really band-aids, but just you know, perfect for like a bigger wound. And that is pretty much all of the like wound care supplies that I have. Um, you know, paper cuts don't even need band-aids. So I tried to kind of think a little bit more um, outside the box with the bandages. So moving on into like the big compartment area, I actually have a pack of face masks. Um, we all know how important these have been in the last couple of weeks and months. Um, so this would definitely be beneficial for a variety of reasons. Um, I know in the hospital, uh, we will use these if we are doing like a sterile procedure at bedside, like a central line dressing change. So, you know, having, having some of these to protect someone's wound or something like that from me is a good idea regardless. So I decided to pick up a pack of these. I think that I bought them at like Target you know, just a pack of two was like $5, kind of ridiculous. Um, so, you know, once things kind of calm down, you might be able to find those at a more affordable price. I also have this nice pair of heavy duty matte black bandage shears. This was the number one comment that I got on my last first aid kit video. So many comments said, you need scissors. And I was like, I know. So here are those scissors. They're super cool and sleek looking. Um, I flip and love these. Now, also, I'm gonna get some hate for this and I don't really care. I have these tourniquets. So I bought these in a pack from Amazon, um, like a pack of six, and they're these like brightly colored tourniquets. So I'm gonna show you how these work. So you got this whole thing, right? You clip this in around the limb or whatever, and then you pull to tighten. And somebody said, that's not gonna get tight enough. It's not actually gonna work. This thing is tight. Not to mention, when you get it around your arm, you can keep like, that's me trying to put it on my own arm. Um, so obviously putting it on somebody else is gonna give me a lot more force to be able to pull. And here's the best part about tourniquets, you guys. Are you ready? If one doesn't work, slap on a second one. So that's literally why I have four in here. So I have a blue, yellow, red, and black. These are different colors so that they're easy to spot and grab. It's easy also to identify that they're on a person. Um, so that is why I have included those in here. Um, now, moving on from that, obviously bleeding is a very important emergency, so that's why I wanted to be prepared for that. Next thing in this compartment um, is this tiny little mini first aid kit from Dollar Tree. Um, in here I have some gauze pads, just like the square gauze um, and band-aids. I actually bought this first and so I thought, you know, like before I was actually putting together a first aid kit, so I thought, you know, might as well throw it in there because you can never have too many band-aids. Um, I also have a pack of sterile exam gloves. Um, obviously though, here's the thing, um, as soon as this package gets open, they're not considered sterile anymore. So these really aren't even sterile because it's already been opened, but they're just like basic latex exam gloves. I also picked up one of these. Uh, this was recommended to me actually, and I'm really glad that I got it. So this is um, the bug bite thingy. Um, I think you can also use these for like snake bites, stuff like that. But it's meant like if you get a bug bite, I'm not sure if this is gonna work on me. Um, but if you get a bug bite, you're meant to put it on the skin and then push it down and then pull up on these handles. And it's supposed to help extract um, like the 
bug bite toxins, um, if that makes sense. So I actually, this was a pretty good idea. We, you know, mosquitoes are very common where I live. So um, thought that that would be beneficial. Um, the next thing in here is some rubbing alcohol, um, just isopropyl alcohol. This is 50%, um, but you can pick the percentage that you like. Um, this can be used for a couple different things. You can literally pour this straight into an open wound. I could use these to sanitize my scissors or tweezers. Um, so this serves a couple different purposes. Um, back when COVID first hit and you could not find cleaning supplies, uh, I used household rubbing alcohol mixed with paper towels to make cleaning wipes. Um, so these, you know, it's super versatile. You can use it for a lot of different things. Um, I used to have hydrogen peroxide in here. Honestly thought that it was still in here, so I'm not sure why it's not. Um, you can include peroxide in your first aid kit. A lot of people either A, don't know how to use it, or B, they just hear the stigma about it, and so they think like, oh, it's not good to use. Um, I will admit, yes, it, it has its issues. Um, if hydrogen peroxide is used too excessively or incorrectly, uh, it can actually lead to some chemical burns. And I've seen that firsthand and that's not good. Um, so here's my suggestion if you're gonna carry both peroxide and rubbing alcohol. Um, rubbing alcohol should be used for a dry or bleeding wound. Uh, peroxide should be used for a pus filled draining wound where infection is suspected um, because what it's going to do is it's actually going to go in and dry it out so if you have a blister um, or something that is draining it's got fluid in it I would use the peroxide because it, it's going to help dry it out and kill the infection um, so there's a specific time and place for one or the other. Um, peroxide is less common now um, just because people have had issues with it. But like I said, you know, that has to do with education and um, knowing when to use it and how much to use. Um, so that's, you know, that's important to keep in mind. Next thing um, on this other side, I have some uh, of these like little alcohol pads we use these all the time in the hospital most commonly um to like cleanse an area before we give somebody a shot or to you know wipe off like the hub of their iv that kind of thing um but again you can also use those to wipe off your scissors um to wipe down a surface that kind of thing and then i also have just some more gauze pads um basic basic gauze pads now the final thing in this kit um, that I'm gonna show you, which I think is probably one of the most important things um, that you can have, and that is a CPR mask. So this mask um, I actually bought on Amazon. It was $8. It comes like this, so you could clip it onto a backpack or something like that. Um, but basically it's literally exactly what it sounds like. Um, it comes with alcohol pads to sanitize before or after use, I would do after. Um, and then it also comes with a pack of gloves if you want them. Now here is the mask itself. So you pop this out and then you can wrap this around their head, which gives for a tighter seal. Um, and then you blow through this. to do your breaths. Um, I didn't even know that you could buy these yourself on Amazon um, until I had done my ACLS class for work and you know, was like, I need to find myself one of these to carry in my first aid kit. And I thought that this was really beneficial once I realized that you can literally buy this. This was $8. Um, so I thought, you know, that is probably one of the most valuable things that I can put in my bag. If someone were to go into respiratory or cardiac arrest and it was necessary, um, I have it. And I'm not having to put my mouth on somebody. I have to say, if I was laying there unconscious, like, I don't think I would care about somebody putting their mouth on mine. Um, but at the same time, I could understand, you know, seeing that happen to, like, your family member. Um, so having one of those uh, would be greatly beneficial um, to use to make sure that you're giving breaths properly without touching the other person's mouth. Um, obviously, 
if you don't have one of those, you're not gonna stand there and be like, oh, I don't have a bag mask, it's fine. Um, but it's there if you need it. But I just thought that that was really cool, you know? All right, guys, so um, that is pretty much it for my first aid kit bag. If you guys have any suggestions, please leave them down below. Um, I made some changes intentionally to this bag, including taking out um, a couple of like over-the-counter medications, um, things like that, because I felt like maybe they weren't necessary. Um, someone made a joke on my last video that I was carrying around a pharmacy as opposed to a first aid kit. So I tried to take that criticism um, to heart and make some changes. Uh, for the most part, things are pretty much the same. I wanted this to be a lightweight, easy to carry, realistic, budget friendly bag and I feel like that's what I did. Most of the items in here cost a dollar. The only things that didn't were like the scissors, tourniquets, um, the CPR mask, uh, you know those kinds of things and those were found on Amazon for very inexpensive. So. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know that it's a longer video. If you like videos like this, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below um, with suggestions. I will be doing an updated car emergency kit as well as an updated home emergency kit uh, within the next couple of weeks. Um, so I'm excited about that. I hope that you guys are too. Um, that's pretty much all that I can think of. So I hope that you guys are having a great day and I will see y'all next time.